Hello and welcome to Wagered on Tilt everyone, I am T and today I want to kick off the new series walking step by step through statistics. This is going to go back to the very basics of stats, predating modeling and stuff like that on this channel. Uh, some of the stuff that I've received from people are saying that they don't fully understand a lot of the concepts behind statistics. So I want to cover this from the very beginning and go very simplistic and then slowly work our way up to building an actual functional model. So hopefully this is going to be insightful or educational for you. If this is too basic or too beginner, feel free to skip this video. Uh, I will be coming out with more and more leading up to the models, or you can go ahead and check out the shorts to look at different NFL picks and ways that I'm modeling things as well. So let's go ahead and dive into the basics of statistics, part one. So as I mentioned, we're going to go through the very basics of statistics. So here you can see a random set of 10 numbers that were generated. Some of these are going to be repeating, which is great because that is going to be useful for when we're talking about these things here. So when somebody says the mean, they mean the average. So when I come in here, I can type in equals average, and that will go ahead and open this up in Excel. And then I just select the numbers and then close that parenthesis, and that gives me the average or the mean. So out of all this data, the average is 10.9. Now you could say, why is that the average? Well, if you remember, it's you sum all these numbers together and then divide by how many numbers there are. So we can also prove that again by going here. So I'm just gonna say this plus 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 this. All of this, let's go ahead and put that in parentheses so that it actually makes sense, right? All of that summed together and there's 10 numbers divided by 10 gives us 10.9. So we know that that is true. The next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is the median. Now the median is the middle number. So here it says returns the median or the number in the middle of the set of given numbers. So if we were to go ahead and do this, that gives us 11, close to 10.9, but not exactly that, it is 11. Now if we we're gonna go ahead and do the mode and we come down here and we're gonna say mode single. So this returns the most frequently occurring or repetitive value. Here you see where it says mode, it's got the little triangle thing here. That means that you can't use it anymore, it's outdated. So we're gonna go ahead and do this and then we're gonna select the data set and then we're gonna go ahead and close it out and it says 11. Now we have two fives, one four, one ten, one two three, three elevens, one thirteen, one nineteen, and one twenty. So 11 does check out as being the mode, which means that is the most commonly occurring one. Now in here, it is important to understand mean, median, and mode because when you are going to be modeling sports betting, this is very important. The mean has, again, the sum of all the numbers and then divided by how many instances there are. So think of it, if there's an NFL player and he consistently, for 10 games, let's just say, we'll show this example, he did 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, and then in one game he did 150 yards and then he went to 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards. If you were going to place a bet, would you say that he is likely to go over the average? Well, first you'd have to say, well, what is the average? So let's go ahead and take a look at the average and we'll go ahead in there, 24. So if I gave you a list of these numbers and I said, are you willing to bet money that he goes over his average of 24? Not likely. He only popped for 150 in one super unique game. Probably terrible defense, an amazing game because all of his other wide receivers and tight ends were injured. So you would never take that kind of a bet. Now, if I were to go ahead and look at this and say, you know what, what if we did the median? Let's go ahead and change the average out here. 10. Would we deal with a 10? Would he go over or under, right? Now, obviously this is matching up exactly, so I'll say just slightly over the median. Let's just say they said 15. Would you say he'd go over or under 15? So let's go ahead and write this down. So we're gonna say book has him at, let's just say 20. So if I were to look at this with an average, average would say take the over. And we'll just mark this as average. However, if I were to go ahead and take this, I'm just gonna paste it in here and then switch this out to median. So if we were looking at the book line and it said, 
over or under 20, if I used an average, I'd say, yeah, that's great. Well, look at this. He usually doesn't even go close to 20. He exploded for that one game. If I took the median, I'd say, yeah, definitely not taking the over. I'm going to take the under on that because he clears it by 10 yards almost every single game. Now, there's other instances when you're going to want to use the mode. The mode is going to be, again, the most commonly occurring. So if we were looking at this, I could say 10, 10, 10. Here he went for 20. Uh, here we'll say 30. Here we'll say 27. And then I'll say 13. Then he had a really solid game again, 60. And then he went for five, right? He petered out on the end of season. So he went for five. So again, you can kind of start seeing some swerving numbers here, right? We have 33 is our average, 16 and a half is our median. Now let me move this down here. Now if I were to come in here, and this will be our mode, equal mode, and again single, because it's a single array, come in here, boom, 10. So if we're looking at this, the most common occurrence is 10. Now again, we have a small data set and things like that, so we're gonna worry about that in the future. Just so everybody knows, when you're dealing with statistics, you wanna trust stuff that has large data sets. If you don't have a large data set, there's ways to fix that. We'll talk about that in the future. But just assuming that this is all we have and this is all we need to look at, the most common event is 10, the median is 16.5, and the average is 33 and a half. And again, that 10 only occurs three times out of 10. So, you know, there's a little bit around like 33% roughly, right? So that is a problem compared to the median, compared to the average. So this is why it's important to really understand what you're looking at and what numbers you're trying to use, because this is drastically going to impact the model. So when you're reading books on statistics or anything like that, you'll have something that will go ahead and show a value inside of a parenthesis in the P. That means the probability of this thing. So that's all that means. If you ever see that notation, that's what that means. So here we have three different types based upon data sets. So we have data set A, data set B, and our result. So you have a type of behavior. So if I have a union, okay, the union of A and B. So if I have data set A has one, two, three, and data set B has three, six, eight, nine, if I wanted to do a union and find a probability on the union, what I'm going to do is add these together and then that includes my new data set. So in here you'll notice that the extra three between the two is dropped because we only want unique values when we're looking at a union. Then we have an intersect. We have one, two, three with an A, three, six, eight, nine with an B. The intersect is three, meaning that the only shared element between these two data sets is the number three. So if you're trying to find an intersect probability, it's gonna be on the shared element only. And lastly, we have complement, which is one, two, three in A, three, six, eight, nine in C. The complement is going to be whatever is missing from A. So if I say, what is the complement of A? Well, in here we wouldn't include three because three exists in here. Six, eight, nine do not exist in here. So the complement of A, with B is going to be 689, right? So now we have our new updated data sets. How you find these probabilities we'll discuss here in a second, but just so you understand that is a union, right? You're grouping them all together. In intersect, you're finding where they all match. In a complement, you're finding out where one group differs from another and you find that difference. So if you are doing a probability of union, right? What we're gonna figure out is what is the probability of getting these numbers? So if we were to say that this is a six-sided die, and that die is a fair die, in group A we have two, three, four, and group B we have two, five, six. So if I were to say, what is the probability of rolling something in A or B, what would happen is this is where you would sum the probabilities. So again, a six-sided die, we have one occurrence, two occurrence, three occurrence. So it's a equals, we have three, I'm just gonna write it this way, three divided by six plus five and six, which is two of six. And the reason why we're doing the two of six instead of three is because again, on the union, you remove extra numbers, right? Extra counts. 
So in here, the data set really would be two, three, four, five, six. So we would not include the union of the two on both of them. So the probability of getting one of these numbers out of that is going to be, you know, 83.3%. So if we were to check that, right, you could also say how many numbers, one through six. So you have two, three, four, five, six, which is equal to five divided by six, which matches. So we're good there. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the intersect. The intersect between two, four, six, one, two, three, four is equal to the probability where they have a shared number. So the only shared number is two. And again, now we're talking about a fair sided die uh, that is being rolled. So that is one divided by six. So the probability of the intersect of A and B is going to be about 16.6%. So let's just go ahead and say for this probability, I wanna know what is the probability of rolling an even number and that that number is less than five. So in this data set, we have the numbers that are even and in this data set, we have the numbers that are less than five. So where they intersect is what's gonna give us that probability. So here we'd say the probability of rolling an even number less than five is 0.16%. Now, when you have a thing called a conditional probability, Right, you're going to say something like, what is the probability that the die is a three given that it is odd, right? So given that it is odd. So in this example, we're just gonna go ahead and switch it around a little bit. What we're going to head and do is say, instead of it being three and an odd, we're gonna say, what if it is even and the number is six? So what we're gonna say is, what is the probability that it is going to be a six given that we rolled an even number. So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and find the intersect for a numerator. And again, numerator is the top number on a division equation. So the intersect between these two sets is six. And then you're gonna go ahead and divide by the actual full set, which means you're going to divide by this set here, right? So here we have the probability of six divided by the probability of it being a two, four, or six. So if we were to go ahead and change this around, we'd say equals, and I'm just going to go ahead and say one divided by six divided by, and then I'll say three divided by six, which gives us a 33% chance. So the way to read this would be again, given that we rolled an even, what is the probability of getting a six, or what is the probability of giving a six given that we rolled a two, four, or six, so an even number. So that is a way to look at that one. Now let's go on to the last one here. So now in here, we're gonna just go ahead and talk about how you treat this type of information. So in this, we are going to say, what is the probability uh, that a player will be targeted and make a catch? So we have here that um, all players have a 30% catch probability and each player has a 15% target probability. So again, this is going to be an intersect. So in order to find this, we take the first probability, the probability that they are targeted, and I'm gonna say times the probability that they make the catch. Four and a half percent is the probability of a player making a catch if that player is only targeted 15% of the time and they only have a 30% catch rate. So this is a great way that you can use statistics in modeling sports. So for this one, let's go ahead and update this scenario because this scenario doesn't fully work. So we'll change this up a little bit. We're gonna say, what is the probability that a QB passes and that uh, they score a touchdown, make a touchdown or both, okay? So in here, these are kind of independent things. So it will be QB passes and score a TD. So what is the probability that a quarterback passes, that a player scores a touchdown, or that both of these events occur? Now, we had to change this scenario out from the above because again, a catch probability is dependent upon a target, right? So one of the things that you have to understand is that in statistics, you need to discuss dependent or independent events um, typically, you need to do independent events. Uh, that is the simplest thing. And we'll discuss things that are uh, dependent in the future. So in this one, right, the intersect, 
However, down here, we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently because again, you couldn't have him make a catch without getting a target. So here we went ahead and changed it. So well, all you'll have to do is say this probability plus this probability minus the intersect, which again is this times this, right? So we're saying the probability that a player will have a QB pass or that they will make a touchdown or both, we're gonna say the probability of the QB pass plus the probability of a score minus the probability of a pass occurring plus the score. Because again, you wanna remove those duplicate values within the data set. So if we were to go ahead and do that, we have a 40.5% chance of one of those events occurring. Again, this one, this one, or both. So once again, that's one way that you can deal with some of these basic statistics and understanding the way that you would go ahead and either add them or multiply them. So if you're multiplying, again, intersect where both things occur. If you're doing the union, right, this plus this or all of it, right, that's where you're going to do the plus plus and then subtract out your intersect. So that is it everybody. Like I said, this is a very basic concept of statistics. We're just scratching the surface. These are shorter videos designed to try and give you small little bite sized pieces to try and chew on and think through. Make sure you have a strong understanding of the foundations of statistics. That way when we get into larger sports models, it gets a little bit more clear and simple as to why we're doing certain things or even then how can you change out these models to make them even better and more profitable. If you like the content that you see, whether it's in this video or one of my many other videos, feel free to like and subscribe. That way you are notified as soon as the next video is available. If you found this information helpful, useful, or interesting, please like and share it with people. That way it pushes it up to the top of the YouTube algorithm. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. I will respond as quickly as I can. And if you need to reach me directly, you can reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt or in the unabated Discord as the T. So that is all I've got for today. Until next time, happy wagering.